back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple that loves the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We love all the Marvel movies. And so we started a show that goes ahead and we uh, review, score, and rank all the Marvel movies. We rewatch them and then do all that. And in case you think we're totally crazy because of the way we started this take, <laughs> Bula is actually the typical greeting in Fiji, which is where we just went on our honeymoon. Hence, yeah. We're bringing you a little piece of Fiji as well. <laughs> and so... What we do is that uh, we developed a scoring sheet, and you can go ahead and you can uh, download that or fill it out online um, down below uh, this description of this video. And through this scoring sheet, we go ahead and we score each film based on different categories. All right, so we're going to talk about those different categories in this review, and then give you scores for each of those reviews. And then based on that score, that's how we rank them. Yeah. So it's the most scientific way to arbitrarily score a film. Now on to our review for Thor Ragnarok. Our first category is lead male and lead male likability. How much do we like our lead characters? While there is a lead female in this movie and she is Valkyrie and she yeah. is a badass, she's wonderful. Definitely, 100%. There is no debating the fact that this movie really is a story about two brothers and it is Loki and Thor the whole way. So we had to make a hard choice, but we decided that this really is more of a lead male, lead male buddy type film than it is a traditional lead male and lead female film. I give them both a four. I want both of these guys in my inner circle of friends. My scores were almost the same. Uh, I gave Loki a score of four. I'm sorry, there's just, there's a lot of love for Loki and mm -hmm. I want to hang out with him if nothing else. I think he's funny. Thor for me didn't quite make it Oof. into that category. I got a three for him. He's, he's definitely a badass and there's no arguing that. In Thor the Dark World, you gave him a four, and now you're not giving him a four in Ragnarok? How? So the next category is lead male and lead male bangability. Uh, so for me, of course, Loki got a score of four, uh, which is this will lead to some shower sex, morning sex, thanks, see you later sex. We didn't um, get a five out of it from you. He I think I might get a five. No. I do love Loki a, a, a lot, but he's just not husband material. <laughs> so for Thor, they have a hot face, hot body. What else do you need? I mean, he's undeniably attractive. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your actual score, though? That was It was a score of two. Okay. It was the hot face, hot body score. Okay. For me, I gave Thor a score of zero. Loki, I gave a one. Whoa! Yes. Loki gets a one where Whoa. it's, all right, I've had a few beers. Let's do this. He could shapeshift into you. He's a, he's, he's a trickery guy, you know? So after a few beers, you know, he could, you know, he could trick me. Our next category is lead male and lead male relatability. I gave them both a two, which is, it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. I have the same score. I also gave them both a two. Okay, so now on to our villain. Our, our villain in this is Hela, played mm -hmm. by Kate Blanchett. Uh, Hela is the goddess of death, uh, which is pretty awesome title. It's pretty heavy, yeah. Villain. I mean, <laughs> you know, go big or go home. She yep. goes big. How many people does the villain's end goal affect? And in order to rank that, we need to know what is the villain's end goal. And she cl pretty clearly states out what her end goal is. And she said, Odin shouldn't have stopped at the Nine Realms, and Asgard needs to rule over all others. And that is her goal. Um, so for me, how many people does this affect? I gave it a five. It affects the entire universe. I gave her a score of four. I said multiple worlds, health and happiness. There are a couple things that, that kept me from the universe thing, which was part of it was, uh, okay, she draws her, her, her power from Asgard. So obviously she's going to have to keep coming back to this area. It just felt to me like she was somehow anchored in a particular area of the universe, even if it affected multiple worlds. Um, and even if she had this great ambition, but I didn't see her taking over the universe as a whole. So how strong is the villain compared to the hero? I gave this a four. I said she is significantly stronger than our heroes. She crushes Thor's hammer in her hands, as Loki puts it, like it was a piece of glass. I also gave her a four. She's, there's no question, she's significantly stronger than our heroes. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's fact. So next up, uh, and I'm, I'll be interested to see what reaction I get to my, my score here, okay. is, do you like the villain? Do you care about the villain? I ultimately gave her a three that I hate her, uh, just because, I mean, she does wipe out pretty much all of Asgard, and, um, you know, she's she's torturing Thor and, you know, mocking him, like, who were you the god of again? And so I, I ultimately gave her a three. She, she, she's a bad guy. I, I don't know. So. I, on the other hand, gave her a four. Oh, my um, God. I, you, see, I probably, I doubted myself. I should have given her a four, too. She probably deserves a four. Bravo, Kate Blanchett, because you made her sarcastic. She was yep. dry. She had a sense of humor. She just... 
I mean, and she had sex appeal. Like, I'm sorry, Hella's hot. In maybe <laughs> yeah. like a grungy 90s yeah. emo kind of way, but she is. Um, yeah. And the fact that I was even teetering on liking her, I was like, I have to give her credit for this because her end goal is not original. Her methods of wiping everyone out, not original. And yeah. yet I'm enthralled watching her on screen. And I, that's true. I do. I like her. Thor is probably what she deserves. Yeah. <laughs> so I got Thor wrong, but I got hella right. You did get hella right. <laughs> uh, which brings us to villain bang ability. And as you said, Hella is very sexy. She has a tremendous sex appeal. So I gave her a three. Uh, three is, I feel like she could teach me a thing or two in the bedroom. And being the goddess of death, she probably could. And I usually give a three to uh, characters that I find incredibly sexy, but they're probably going to murder me right after, right after <laughs> sex. So <laughs> it's just like teetering on that line, again, at like the, the kind of crazy versus the hot scale. So yeah. while she is very sexy, and I can totally understand wanting to bang her and probably have like dirty banging with her because like that just seems like the 90s hella grunge thing that would happen. Uh, it's just not for me. So I gave her a zero. Side characters! <laughs> Our side characters are Odin, Doctor Strange, the Grandmaster, Hulk slash Bruce Banner, Valkyrie, Scourge, aka the Executioner, Heimdall, and Korg and Meek. I do have a one. It's just okay. one one. All right. Uh, but I gave Scourge a one. Okay. Um, I said he's really just there for the plot. We agree on Scourge, the Executioner. I gave him a one as well. Um, I think he was just there for the plot. I also think Heimdall was just there for the plot. He was just there, kind of there. I know, I know, I like Heimdall, but he was just there for the plot. He's just there to tell Thor how to escape and to save the Asgardians until Thor can arrive. I also gave a one, and this kind of hurts me, but I gave a one to Doctor Strange. <gasps> I know, I know. <laughs> Because this is like basically when Bethany fell in love with Doctor Strange is in this movie. Yeah. For shame. I know. I know. So my twos, Heimdall, Odin, and Valkyrie. I felt like these three characters were very significant to, uh, one, to the journey of Thor. I also thought they helped Loki a little bit at times. Mm -hmm. uh, Valkyrie in particular with Loki was really, uh, I liked their interactions. I loved their very quick combat with the knife scene. Oh yeah, that was um, fun. That was reminiscent of like a Winter Soldier kind of fighting scene. Yeah, I mean, at, at, and that was nice because we didn't see a lot of that kind of fighting in Thor previously or no. anywhere else in the movie. So that was, it was a nice little, yeah, um, something new in there, which was fun. Odin, I think his death, you see the impact it has on both Loki and Thor. Sure. Uh, so even though Loki maybe doesn't get as as worked up or is seemingly on the surface as emotional as Thor. You do see him hiding his emotion and getting worried for about sure. what happens next. So for him, I thought it also played a part. Yeah, so we agree on Odin. I gave Odin a two as well uh, for the same reasons you listed. I gave Korg, I gave Hulk, I gave the Grandmaster, and I gave Valkyrie all a three. So four characters, I gave a three to. Um, Hulk, his banter with, Hulk, with, with Thor... And the baby arms. Uh, I talked about it in our in our uh, in our Civil War review when I was wearing the Captain America costume. Which if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, check out the YouTube card right there. Uh, it's fun. We dress up. I dress up like Captain America. She dresses up like Black Widow. It's Black great. Widow, of course. Yeah, she's the best. So I also had four threes. Mine were just slightly different. Okay. Uh, so where we agree, Hulk, Grandmaster, and Korg and Meek. Uh, for all the reasons that you listed, I I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then where we differed was Dr. I put Strange. Dr. Strange in there. Yeah. And the reason for that is even though he wasn't in a whole bunch of scenes to bring humor out into the movie throughout the film, he did steal that scene. And he was yeah. hilarious. Next up is the plot. And for this one, I gave it a four. I said I wouldn't get up to go to the bathroom or look down at my popcorn. This film was delicious to watch. Yeah, I gave it a four as well. And I think that... Um... A lot of this has to do with directing. I think, uh, you know, knocked it out of the park in that one, <clears throat> in that regard. And I think it really captured what, what the tone of what Thor films can be. Female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? Um, so I gave this a four. I said the female lead is a true hero because I think Valkyrie is a true hero. And not only that, but the female lead is a true villain. So for me, I also gave female empowerment a score of four. Um, Obviously, based on our ranking, it fits because Valkyrie is a true hero. Mm -hmm. uh, she's there in the final fight. She makes a huge impact. 
Uh, she's one of the sort of like three musketeers with Loki yeah. and Thor. Soundtrack. So I gave soundtrack a score of two. I said there were a couple of tunes that got me pumped up. For me, I gave soundtrack a three. I said that the tunes were like a driving force behind the scenes that they were in. Also, I gave it a three for the Willy Wonka when he's... <laughs> When Thor rides in Sakaar and they play the Willy Wonka theme song, that was brilliant. That was great. Next up is humor. Uh, this movie was very funny. You know, we've been laughing all throughout our review of it, and uh, it didn't disappoint in the humor category. It got a 41 for me. Still a really good score, but maybe we could have got a little bit more. Maybe we should, you know, but I got 41. I gave it a score of, 30, of 33. So next up are visual effects. With visual effects, I give this a score of three. I said it's definitely big screen worthy. It felt like a larger than life Thor movie compared yeah. to the previous Thor movie. So Agreed. I feel like, you know, this was a go big or go home Thor. So go big and see it in theaters. Yes, agreed. I gave it a three as well. That was definitely big screen worthy. So the love story here, it's basically seeing how Loki and Thor can work together. We've seen it on and off. But now we're kind of seeing how does this work if they are teamed up together. Mm -hmm. um, and it's tough because you where, where do you stand with Loki? Can you ever trust Loki? I mean, they do keep it interesting. Yes. Uh, so for this one, I gave it a score of four, which if these two ever break up, there's going to be some ugly crying and it'll be bad to think of these two not together. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. I gave it a four as well. Moving on to dialogue. For me, I gave dialogue a three. I said it was sharp, it was clever, it was witty. I also gave it a three, which brings us to action sequences. Uh, there are five action sequences in this, so it doesn't disappoint on the number of action sequences yeah. that we actually get to watch. Um, for me, I gave it a score of three, and a three is I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way, and I uh, that brings my total then for action sequences to a 15. We gave the exact same score, I gave it a 15 as well. Our final category is heart. So I gave Heart a 1. Ooh. I said it had a sweet moment or two. Uh, and really the sweet moment was kind of just with, between Thor and Odin at the end. For me, I gave this a score of 2, which is warm fuzzies. Even though there wasn't tear-jerky moments, uh, which is why it didn't get higher than a 2, it gave me the warm fuzzies I think it was going for. And I think that's probably the most that this film wanted to achieve. So my final score for Thor Ragnarok was 123. Mine was 118, but... I also gave a fist bump, so that made my score go up to 119. So right now it's at 121, which I believe puts it in fourth place. Barely edging out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, that had 120. Because it is Thanksgiving, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we would like to thank all of you. All of you who possibly tuned in for the first time to mm -hmm. watch us. All of you who have loyally subscribed to us. Uh, those of you who follow us on Twitter or on Instagram, who comment, who like our stuff, um, we're just very grateful to have people to share this with. We like what we do and we have fun with it and we enjoy goofing off and just being ridiculous. Um, but it means so much more when there are people out there who are sharing it with you and commenting back. So we really want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your support because it does mean a whole lot to us. So a big part of this is that we want to hear from you. We want to hear your comments. We want to hear your reviews of Thor Ragnarok. Um, go ahead and rewatch these videos because I think if you rewatch them, it's, it's different after having seen all 23 films and then going, yeah. starting from the beginning and then rewatching them like, you know, kind of every week. Uh, you really get involved with the characters. So fill out our score sheet down in the comments below and post your comment and your score for Thor Ragnarok. Ours was 121. But that is definitely not definitive. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.